and we have two mythical live birds. One that looks out to sea, and one that looks in that. Now, the live bird that looks out to sea, she's a lady live bird, and her name is Bella. And the one that looks, she's waiting for her sailor husband to come home. And the one that looks inland is called Bertie. And Bertie's just waiting for all the pubs to open. <laughs> but the building that you see on the right-hand side, um, that's one of the iconic buildings. It used to be the largest building in the whole of Europe. And with its metal frame and granite facade, it's one of the grandfathers of all skyscrapers. Now, the land that we've just been on has all been reclaimed from the River Mersey. And the River Mersey has a tidal estuary between 9 feet to 32 feet every single day. It has sinking sands, moving sandbanks, and whenever <coughs> the wind was high, it was very, very difficult to cross. The church that you see on the right-hand side is called St. Nicholas's Church, the Church of Sailors. And there's always been a church there since about the 1200s. And this is one of the original streets. Because you see, back, the big date in British history is 1066. And Liverpool didn't exist. It wasn't until King John came along in 1207. And he wanted to put down a little town and a little port to simply put down the rebellious Irish and the rebellious Welsh. Can you imagine any Irish person or Welsh person being rebellious at all? I can't. But on the right-hand side, in this Ashler stone building, this is where the Battle of the Atlantic was fought from. And the ceilings for the cellars are over seven foot thick. Now, the Battle of the Atlantic was something like about five years and eight months long and it controlled all the convoys that were coming over to Liverpool from Canada and America and if you can imagine in those days when the convoys were coming over there was at least a thousand convoys and each and every single convoy there was over 60 ships and if you can imagine back between 1943 1944 where your ship is docked over 1,250,000 GIs came over. Now, while we're going around, you're going to see quite a few sculptures. Some very ordinary and some very, very strange. Straight on, please. And coming up on the left-hand side, there's a, quite an interesting sculpture. And it was made by a Japanese artist called Taro Shietso. And Taro was very concerned about genetics. And he looked at all the products coming into <laughs> Liverpool and he thought, right, if you were to get two particular products, such as a lamb and a banana, and you genetically put them together, then this is what you would get. And so coming up at the next set of traffic lights, on the left-hand side, you'll see in the colours of Ukraine, a lamb banana. <laughs> Now, it's been painted in the Ukrainian colors just for this particular year, but you can see the banana of his bottom and the wonderful, beautiful lamb of his face. So his basic view was very simply, please be very careful with what you're doing with genetics. But you're going to see lots of other sculptures on our journey. We're making our way into town, and this particular part of town is part of the university area. Now we have three universities here and uh, we have over 72,000 students. We also have a school of tropical medicine and a couple of teacher training colleges. So we'll be turning right here. We just need to be on the right hand side lane, please. And we're going
going to make our way into town because what I'd like to do is to be able to orientate you so that if you want to come into town this afternoon, then hopefully you'll be able to know where you're going. So we're going right round the roundabout and uh, we're going left up Dale Street, please. But as you go round the roundabout, you'll see one of our three tunnels. There are no bridges over the River Mersey here. And this particular tunnel on our left-hand side was once upon a time the longest underwater tunnel in the world. It's over 2.15 miles long. Mm -hmm. But perhaps more famous for the filming that's done there, and that is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, and also Fast and Furious 6. This building on the right-hand side is a wonderful Art Deco building belonging to a charity. But if you went back to the 1730s, there was a young man called Robert Morris, and he was born here. And he went to America at the age of 13, <coughs> joined his father, and he became very rich. And uh, he was a person who signed three of America's greatest documents, that is the uh, Declaration of Independence, the Confederation, and the Articles of uh, the Confederation and the Constitution. And he was a Liverpool person. George Washington also said that he was the person who simply, who simply, uh, without his money, <coughs> the revolution would never have happened. This street is called Dale Street. And Dale Street's full of eclectic buildings that you can see, particularly on their left-hand side. I like this one. And this was the financial insurance banking area of Liverpool. Going back to Robert Morris, he was so important in that he gave all the American troops the uh, promissory notes so that the American Revolutionary Army would get paid, would get paid. And so therefore he's very, very important. And talking about insurance and things like that, we have the Prudential Assurance, we also have Sun Life, Royal Sun Life. And they were, whenever we had the great disaster in the fire of Chicago, they paid out everything, but the reserves were never touched. So a huge amount of insurance and financial clout here within Liverpool, particularly in the 19th century. <coughs> There's a building that's sticking out on the right-hand side, and that's our town hall. And it was built around about 1750s. And at the very top, you'll see some very interesting fascias. And there are fascias of leopards, African ladies, elephants, crocodiles, and cameras on the right-hand side. And you see, unfortunately, we come into a difficult part of our history here within Liverpool because we were responsible for the transatlantic trade. We were the biggest port in the transatlantic trade. And we were responsible for bringing 1.5 million people over from Africa to the Caribbean and to the southern states of America. This street is called Water Street. And again, bank buildings, and this huge big building on the left-hand side is called the India Buildings. It was the home of the Blue Funnel Line, which dealt with uh, an area called East India. And we also have New Zealand House and West African House here. And East India basically meant China, India, Japan, and Korea. Now, to orientate you, the building on your right-hand side is again the Liver building, and your ship is right behind it. And you'll see the birds on top that I was talking about earlier on, Bertie and Bella. You should be able to see that from everywhere around Liverpool, and your ship is right behind there. But also that particular building, if anybody's seen a film called Batman with Robert Patterson, that's actually Gotham City. So all that you have to do is to head for the Liver building or Gotham City and your ship is right behind there on the right hand side. <laughs> so 
So right beside the Liver building is the Cunard yeah, building. Mm. The Cunard building is after Samuel Cunard, the Canadian. And uh, it was a first class waiting lounge for the first class waiting lounge for the Cunard passengers, built 1916. And it has four eagles on each and every single corner. And the four eagles represent America. The very next building with a big tower is a ventilation shaft built in the Art Deco style in the 1930s. In itself is quite a beautiful building and in front of that is our Mersey Docks and Harbour Board. Now we're going to be turning left here and on the left hand side you'll see a building and at the very top it's got red and white striped bricks. That is the home of the White Star Line, the White Star Line, i.e. Titanic. So back in those days in 1912, April, thousands of people gathered here because unfortunately in that awful disaster, the captain and m most of the crew would have come from Liverpool. So left-hand side, that's the wonderful white star. Now again, if you were going shopping, and some people decide that they wish to buy Liverpool football shirts or Everton football shirts, then you would go and founded, or one of, certainly were one of the founders of the Baltimore and Ohio Railway. They also became a huge, big independent bank, and eventually uh, Brown and Harriman, you might have heard of them. And he sent uh, his eldest son, William, back to Liverpool uh, to open up a trading mercantile and banking firm here. And he became so rich that he decided that what he would do is that he would 